pretend. No, I never been someone shy until I seen the rise. Still, I had to try. Yeah. Oh, yes. Let me get my words right and then approach you. And when I'll treat you like a man is supposed to, you'll never have to cry. No. I know everyone can relate to when they find a special someone. And she's royal, yeah. So royal. And I want her in my life. I never knew anyone. So one of a kind, no. The way she moves to our own beat. She has the qualities of a queen. She's a queen. Ooh, ooh, what a natural beauty. No need no makeup to be a cutie. She's a queen. She's a queen. And when they ask what a good woman's made of, she's not afraid and ashamed of who she is. She's royal, yeah, so royal. And I need her in my life. I never knew anyone so one of a kind until the night that I see her rise. So supreme. I can see it in her eyes, the way she smiles. Hey, yes I and I, I know the king and queen crown. See I'm tied, so I never leave your side. Just stick with me through the trial times. Oh, and she says she no mind. All right, I know good man is hard to find. And she can't about that giant line. That's why she has no ties at this time. Yeah. I know many men are trying. But she needs to be more than wine and dine because she's royal. Yeah. So royal. And I want her in my life. Welcome to the Ken Ron Prasad Show on Island Zone Radio on this cold Sunday afternoon. And that is right, Miss Lardet Ferguson. She is a queen. Look at this beautiful queen that I'm sitting next to. Let's rock. Queen, so supreme. Ooh, ooh, but the natural beauty. Looks like she got some rhythm. To be a cutie, she's a queen. Of course, she's from Guyana. Supreme, yeah. And when they ask what a good woman's made of, she's not afraid and ashamed of who she is. And this song is for Lord Death. I am playing this song especially for her. Because she's the queen. I want her in my life. I never do anyone. Pretty and brilliant. One of a kind. No, no. When she moves to her own beat, she has the qualities of a queen, my Nubian queen. That's right. A very good afternoon and welcome to the Ken Ron Prasad Show on Island Zone Radio. And, you know, today is, um, I before we start with myself and Miss Lordet, today is, um, I think sometimes it's this guy, Apache Warrior's birthday. And so his wife, his loving wife, who always send greetings to him, she wants him to know how much she really do love him. And guess what? She's sending a special greeting, special body greetings to him. And she wants him to know how much she really do love him. And so and before I get, we get really into the conversation with Miss Lerlet, I want to play this song. And this song is especially for Mr. Apache Warrior. Let's go. My daughter says she works in B2B where she sells it. And his wife is saying that, um, that she loves him very much and uh, she will always be by his side. So this, that is so sweet, right? 
Yes, and she says, um, happy birthday to Apache and congratulations to you. All the best and thank you for everything you do. Lots of love. I love you. And this is what she, I, that's why you get a playlist. The man love, the man, yellow man. Yellow man have become new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This song, especially for Apache Wally. Nobody get hurt. Nobody move. Nobody get hurt. I used to listen to this song when I was a young boy growing up in Guyana. He said he want me to join the army. <laughs> I ain't gonna do it, officer. No way. I ain't gonna do it. Turn out your left pocket. I'm searching for a comb automatic. I'm searching if you have any ratchet. He said, what is your number? I didn't answer. What is your number? I still don't answer. What is your number, boy? I really don't answer. In front of the chopper. Me mama, they me started to answer. Guess what I said? 64, 46, BMW, what you want? 64, 46, BMW, love. He said, give it to me one time. <laughs> give it to me two times. <laughs> give it to me three times. <laughs> Lord, it name. Nobody move, nobody get hurt. Nobody move, nobody get hurt. Not it on yam, jackal, not it on yam, dirt. He come from the planet of Earth. He come from the planet of Earth. Say granny in a kitchen, I cook rice and chicken. The dread out of door, I cook a hit soup. No trouble, granny, granny never trouble you. Not it cook up in my touch too. He him. Nobody move, nobody get hurt. Nobody move, nobody get hurt. The youth, they might dress up in a white collar shirt. And some of them will wear it till it resemble dirt. He said, he want me to join the army. <laughs> I ain't gonna do it, officer. No way, I ain't gonna do it. Turn out your left pocket. I'm searching for a comb automatic. I'm searching if you have any ratchet. He said, what is the number? I didn't answer. What is the number? I still don't answer. What is the number, boy? I really don't answer. He can't call me chopper. Me mama, let me start it to answer. Guess what I said? 64, 46, BMW. What you want? 64, 46, that a BMW. Lord. He said, give it to me one time. Huh. Give it to me two times. Huh. Huh. Give it to me three times. Huh. 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 Lord, it Nobody move, nobody get hurt. Nobody move, nobody get hurt. Not it on yam, chapel, not it on yam, dirt. He don't yam, chapel, not it on yam, dirt. He come from the planet of Earth. Cannot he come from the planet of Earth? Got things they used to do me, not go to eat no more. Things they used to do me, not go to eat no more. The ear it changed to 84. But here, yellow man, come fit, tell you this score. He said, he want me to join the army. All right, welcome back to the Ken Ram Prasad Show right here on Island Zone Radio. And I know by now, uh, Apache Warrior is eating with his beautiful wife, Miss Veronica Jaglal. And she wants you to know that she loves you like bacon saltfish. All right, let's go on to the meat of the show. Today, I'll be uh, interviewing the Miss Beautiful, Miss Lordette Ferguson. You know, the first time I really see Lordette, that was at the Lotus Pageant show. And when I saw her, I says, wow, what a beautiful woman. I said to her, you are beautiful. Did you forget that? I did forget that. Right. So, um, Lordette, I want to say thank you very much first for coming on the show today. Um, how are you doing? I am doing amazing. You are amazing. And you yes. look amazing, too. Thank you. All right. So, you know, when, when I was asking you just now for your, your tea, normally when I go and ask if my colleagues go in and buy coffee or anything, I said I like them just like you, light and sweet, like Lardette. All right, Lardette. So <clears throat> I know that you're from Guyana, so let's talk about you a little bit. You are an international civil servant, 
um, you work in the United Nations system for over 20 years, and that's a long time. That speaks volume of who you are. She's a philanthropist who enjoys engaging with young people. She has led missions and connected groups in the United States, India, Cambodia, Nepal, and our beautiful Guyana to empower women and young people. I was so impressed when I was reading their stuff. And guess what? She is a model. She, right for 10 years from an age of 10 years old we will dig into all of that also she's an actress and you know what i am not surprised because she is intelligent and she got the looks lord it serves on the executive board of the bishops high school alumni association bright girl new york tri-state chapter um and we gusty in cooperation both uh organization that foster educational and other opportunities for young people and i really do like this um you're investing your time with young people and making a difference lord that is an area director for um for 12 new york um, toastmasters i didn't know i was toast toastmasters but we will get to that i i heard of it the toastmasters of new york or wherever it is supporting young professionals in their leadership and public speaking journey and I love your credentials because you, when I was, today I was thinking, you know what? God probably took his own hand and neck, Lord, that he did, he did right? He because did. guess what? She holds a bachelor's degree of social science, a degree in sociology from University of Guyana, and a master's degree um, of social science um, from Long Island University. And she have not stopped of strategic leadership and uh, um, Evangel University in Missouri, right here in the United States. So how are you doing, my dear? I am doing wonderful. You are, right? Yes. And, um, Fantastic. Good. So I want to know, you are from Guyana. Tell me a little bit about and our audience. I know I not too long ago started seeing you showing up and popping up at places, doing an excellent job in terms of being a moderator, like yesterday. And let's talk a little bit about that later on, too. Sure. And um, you MCs, I see at uh, some shows and so. So tell me a little bit about your upbringing in Guyana. Well, um, I was born in Georgetown, mm -hmm. and I went to school in Georgetown. I did all of my schooling in Guyana, uh, my undergraduate schooling in Guyana. Mm -hmm. uh, as you mentioned, I went to Bishop's High School. Uh, yeah. Let me start from my primary school. Right. My primary school, for primary school, I went to the New Communions Primary School. And that was a school that was run by my great uncle, the late Basil Lord McGowan, and my grandmother, Irma McGowan Long. And uh, so that, that was the primary school that I went to. And then I went to Bishop's High School for my and, high school. And I want to tell my audience, my viewers, that Bishop's High School is a very prestigious high school back in the days if you don't know it right? still is it still is it still is yes <laughs> yeah. and so i did my high school in the at bishop's high school and then i went on to the university of diana mm -hmm. where i did my bachelor's degree in sociology and right so that was my um, my education and that's where um, i did all the extracurricular things that um, that you mentioned also i started out um, modeling at Bishop's High School mm -hmm. when I was at Bishop's High School in first form. And uh, yeah, and it became a hobby after that. Wow. Yeah. Um, I, you, you seem, when I look at you, a well-cultured young lady. Thank you. You, you know, like you had a good bringing up, may I say. Tell me a little bit about, I, I'm interested to work mommy and dad. Well, um, actually, uh, it was more mommy and granny. For mommy them. and granny. Yes, my parents got divorced very early, so uh, it was more mommy and granny, and um, and so we, I lived in a household that was um, the pillars of that household were were two, education and faith, mm. and and between the two you couldn't you, you know there wasn't much room for mischief. Um, because you, you know, we had a way of, our parents had a way of straightening us out back in the day, as you know. So, um, so those were the two strong pillars for us. Um, my, my grandmother was a school teacher and my mother was a school teacher. Oh, wow. You see, I tell you, you yes. see, go ahead. So, um, so that's, um, 
that, that was, um, and then of course on the other side, um, to the other pillar was faith. And uh, so we went to Sunday school. Right. So that, you know, so we had a very um, good, and then of course, maybe another F we can add to that was family. The importance of family was just, was drilled into us very early. You can wake up on a Sunday morning and say, mommy, I don't feel good. I, I'm not going to Sunday school today or church today. No. What mommy will tell you? No, no, no. You, she would say, you're going to Sunday school. If you're not feeling well, then, um, then of course, you had to have a real compelling reason, right? It's, but we used to like to go to Sunday school because oh. that's where we, we socialized as well. Right, 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 right. So it wasn't one of those places that you, did, you said that you didn't want to go. You, you, like, you feeling unwell just because you didn't want to go. Um, we had a lot of friends. Um, you know, it was more very community-minded back in the day where, you know, all of our friends are, are you know, are, are, are the children in the neighborhood went to the same Sunday school. And so it was a time where we um, not only were instructed in our faith, but we got a, a chance to socialize as well. If thinking back now, parenting style from then to now, did you and mommy have that relationship where you could communicate or talk? Because long time parents, I know they would like all the only thing they quarrel or whatever. They don't sit down and really have that conversation, if you know what I mean, right? No, they didn't. They absolutely didn't. It was more instructive. Right, right. Correct. Uh, uh, you you did as you were told. Right, right. In those days, uh, my parenting style has differed. I have two daughters, and I I gave them an opportunity to be um, to be a little bit more involved in in how they were parented. Right. I mean, of course, there are certain non-negotiables. Right. All right. There's but uh, but most definitely um, they had a, an opportunity to to uh, to give an input as to. Um, sometimes on the clothing that they wanted to wear, um, you know. Of course, I had the last say, but All right. but I, I I gave them the opportunity. So it was it's different in that context, right? Uh, right, right. Because of the time right. and the place also, also and the culture, right? Right? Because a culture in Guyana is totally uh, back in the time when I was being raised, and the culture when my children were being raised here in the United States. It's two different places. Two different times and two different cultures. Good, good. And you, you have to embrace that. Or you get yourself in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Thinking back about mommy, what's the best advice that she have given to you, Lerda? <clears throat> I think the best advice my mother gave me, and I always uh, uh, thank her for that even now, was uh, to make sure that I, I fulfilled my education. All right. Um, I think that was the best opportunity. And that's the... the the, the best uh, advice, make sure that you, because one of the things, when I left high school, I worked at the bank for one year before I went to the university. And um, the money really sweetened me and I really mm. didn't want to go to right, university. Right. <coughs> but my mom insisted. Oh, wow. And I had to leave that job and go full time to university. Oh, wow. And that was the best thing, the you best advice no. in retrospect. Right. It was the best advice that I was given. And I, right now, I, every young person that I come into contact with, I give them the same advice. Right, right. Make sure that you maximize your educational opportunities. Yes, and we will talk more about it. I forgot to mention, too, er, um, earlier in your introduction that you're doing a doctorate now. I am, I am. Soon we'll be Dr. <laughs> Lord Dead. <laughs> That's nice. I'm, yeah. I'm so, Lord Dead, I'm, you know, and this was not part of the question, but, um, you know, and I applaud you for all the things that you're doing. You know, you're Thank busy you. doing a lot of things. And you are a great role model in our community. And for young people, we'll talk about that too. Lord, it, a lot of Guyanese that I know, uh, you know, when they, they marry and then they finish off with things, they give the children and listen, I'm done. What has caused you to give you that drive to continue your, your education? Uh, my, my, my parents, my grandmother was an educator, uh, oh. like I mentioned, and um, for me, education has opened so many doors and so many, made, provided so many opportunities for me. Mm -hmm. I, and, and that's why I believe that it's important to maximize your educational opportunities. 
And it could be, you know, it does not necessarily have to be formal education. It could be other. Um, right. I'm glad you said other, that. Yeah. Other, yeah, other, opportunities. Yeah, other opportunities. There's so many vocational schools. You know, there's something out there for everyone. Uh, and particularly here in the United States where we are based. Right. There are so many opportunities for our young people. And I so that's why I so uh, always encourage young people to ensure that you make you take full advantage of those opportunities in order to make your life and the life of your family better. And, you know, I'm glad you say that. And that's one of the questions I had for you, that, um, you know, so many young people give up so easily that, you know what, we don't want to, to continue our education. And if, let's say for your young self, what advice you will have for your young self and your and young kids growing up? Well, for my young self, for me, uh, if I were to go back to when I was living in Guyana, right. uh, I, I, you know, the, the advice I would give, you know, to my, uh, that I would give to myself is that it really works out in the end. Good, good. Sometimes we uh, put a lot of pressure on ourselves or our, our community. We put a lot of pressure on our young people. And sometimes rightly so, but um, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves not knowing and not understanding life. Uh, particularly when you come from societies like where we come from in Guyana. But the advice that it all works out in the end, and I, I, I tell young people the same thing today. Keep putting your best foot forward. Keep, yeah. keep, keep living with an, with an openness to learn and to embrace opportunities, and it all works out in the end. You know, I, I want to ask you this question. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm not just being flattery, but how does a pretty girl like you keep up these young boys and keep you, you keep focused on school? How you manage that? Because it's not an easy thing. I Everybody see Lord, they love Lord. Oh my God, look at she, she's pretty white. Let me go, you know, how you manage? Well, I am a woman of faith. I'm a right. woman of principle. Wow. And so... Um, it has to be a, and so I keep focus on, on what I what is ahead of me mm -hmm. and what I, whatever it is that I'm doing, and um, so I you know if if members of the opposite sex are interested, you know you know I I'm always open for conversations. Right. Um, I consider myself a sapiosexual, which is a a woman who um, loves engaging and brilliant conversations. So. Mm -hmm. Those are the types of people that I engage with a lot. I like, I love conversations. I love, I can talk, you know, I love talking and listening to people who know more than me in various um, areas of expertise. I, you know, I'm very open. And, um, and so um, those are the, the kinds of, of things that I engage myself in. And so that's why I'm here with you today, having this conversation and engaging, because, you know, we have that in common. We love conversations. Yeah, of course. So, Thank you. Yeah. What age you came to the United States? I came at 29. Wow. Yeah, which that's is a quite good age. old. Yeah. That, that was a good age. Were you like, mommy, I don't want to leave Guyana? I did not. Originally, I did not want to, 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 leave. to leave Guyana. I, you know, I was living very comfortably in Guyana, and I had a very good job. I was working um, at Demerara Distillers Limited as their public relations officer. Oh, really? And so I lived um, a very comfortable life in Guyana. But then it came to a point when I, that I wanted more. Right, right. And so I came to, I wanted to go to graduate school, and, um, and I decided to come to the U.S. Wow. I didn't know a guy by the name of Joseph Sokmangal, Joe Sokmangal from Demerara Distillery. He was at I thought I stayed that many years ago. That was for forty years ago. So, when you came here, um, what were some of the challenges? Well, are we all have challenges. What were some of the challenges that you have experienced, and how did you um, overcome that? Um, but the good thing is that you came as a little older adult. Yes. So, how was the the challenge here? I think essentially. The first challenge that I had was overcoming, um, overcoming uh, just living in a new space. I, I I did come to the U.S. many times before. Oh, you did. I find yes, oh, which wow. which was a plus. 
right? So I did come here many years before on vacation. And so I, it was not altogether new for me, but, um, but I had always come when it was warm. Okay. And so um, getting adjusted to the climate was, was uh, and I'm still adjusting, mind you. Oh God, me too. Yeah. <laughs> after 40 years, after 30 years, I'm still Jesus. Yeah. It's too damn cold for me, you know? Yes, yes. So I was still adjusted to that. But I think um, it took um, a few months before I was able to get a job and to get enrolled into school. And so once, <coughs> once, the, once the two um, happened, then it was, you know, smooth sailing for me. Good for you. And I, I could see that you adjust well because you're still going to school, you're still doing your thing, you're still living your life. You, I, I think you're living your best life, <coughs> whatever that may be. I most definitely am. Um, my thing is that, how did you, how did you start this modeling thing? I mean, you got the looks, you're a brilliant girl. And who really said, I look, I'm going to, that girl that looks smart, let me pick her out to be a model. How did you start with this modeling thing? Well, actually, I, my aunt, Elaine Merriman, uh, she was the wife of the former mayor of Georgetown, Claude Merriman. And mm. she was the one who, every year, she had a fashion show in her, at her premises. Oh, wow. Yes. And so um, she raised funds for her church. And so she would have a fashion show and tea party. And I would be one of the models. Oh, and right. that's how I started. You, you had fun? You enjoyed it? I enjoyed it. I mean, I, I, it was fun. It, and I was the one, you know, I was the little one. They had, the girls were much younger. I was about 10 years old. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the other girls were much much older. And uh, so you felt like a big girl modeling with the others. Yeah, yeah. And oh. so that's how, that's how it started. That sassy little girl. Look at her. <laughs> How is she doing to herself? Do you still model or no? Not no. Would you? Are you still interested? No. Not, no. Not really. But I think you still got it looks for it though. Yes. Look at you like a fashionista. That Look at you. Well, you know, it's a part of me. Fashion is a part. Of, you, you know, it's it's a part of who I am. I consider myself to be very fashionable. I love clothes. And it's and just earring. Like, uh, oh yes, and the earrings too. Yeah. And, yeah. Good for you. And, you know, I admire that about you. And I always say, um, Lorda, that I like when, like, all the big, big women still dress nicely, that they don't give up on themselves. Yeah. You know, you still get up, dress up, and show up, and that's a great thing about you. <clears throat> now, let's talk about your job. I think that's, you know, I, I want to say that, you know, as a Guyanese, um, as a Guyanese guy that's living here, I'm always very proud um, of other Guyanese who have came to this country and who have done really well, represent the country, you know, and you are doing that. You are working with um, United Nations. Um, tell me more about your job. How did you get the job? Because, I mean, as a Guyanese, when you see a Guyanese here, a Guyanese at the United Nations, you say, oh my God, how come a Guyanese, how you got this job and how you managed to stay for 20 years as a Brown skin girl. <laughs> actually, um, the question, I actually applied for the job, got the job, and that's how come I'm still there, which goes back to my earlier point of encouraging young people and encouraging others to always be prepared for what life brings by making sure that you take advantage of the educational opportunities. Right, right, yes. So I came to the United States with an undergraduate degree. Right, right. And so, and I was in the process of doing my master's degree. And so that essentially put me on a sure footing to be able to, to compete effectively and to be able to get a job at uh, an institution such as the United States, United Nations. Nation, yeah. 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 So, what you like about your job, because you get to interact with people from, I would, su I would suggest, with different parts of the world, because when I look at your, your, um, your resume, you do work with um, Nepal, Cambodia, and, you know, I think one of the great things you do is that you get to interact, you get to touch a little bit about Guyana, 
right? So tell me a little bit about what you like about your job. And I'm interested to know, which, out of all the countries, which one you like the most? But I want to know what's your take on Guyana as it relates to how you like it. Is it easy for you to, because you're Guyanese, to get things done there? Or what, what you do? Talk to us. Okay, so Ken, um, let me just first tell you that my job does not have anything to do with Guyana. Oh, no? No, apart from Guyana being a part oh. of the United Nations. Okay. So I do not work directly with Guyana mm -hmm. or for Guyana. Mm -hmm. I work for the United Nations, right. the United right. Nations Population Fund, actually. And so that is the reproductive health and family, plan family planning arm of the United Nations. And so that's where I've been working for the past uh, 15 years. But before that, I was working with the UN Secretary. And basically, people within the UN system, they move around. And so, um, so that's wh where I am. I work, with, for the exec I work in the executive board team. Um, so basically, all my job has to do with governance. It, it's not a technical position, so I don't work um, in the field um, itself. But what I do is it's a governance-related job. So it, 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 it's essentially um, at our team liaises with the member states, between the member states and management. Mm -hmm. And so the, the board is the governing body for the, for the entire uh, organization. So it's the member states who we have to go to to ensure that our programming plans are passed and approved mm -hmm. and, um, and any changes that we want to make in the organization is approved. So the, the, the 36 member states that govern our organization are essentially the, um, our bosses. So we have to make sure that um, they get all the information that they need so that our our program in terms of executing our mandates is um, is realized. <clears throat> Good. Um, I let's give some love to our viewers. Um, Joni Mahabir, a very good evening to you. Thank you very much. Um, Raghunandan Lal, Nafisa Noor, hope all is well with you. Baby Moon Singh is watching all the way from Guyana, and Iris Goberdan, that's my wife aunt. She's from. Hague Bagdam on the west coast of Damarara. She's a good cook of some Hassa Korea. So when I go to Guyana, I know right where to go. Awesome. Ha some pepper sauce. You know, we Guyanese love a little pepper mm -hmm. sauce, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much. Um, my sister is watching from <coughs> Canada, Anita Ishdaulat Ram, um, Dolly Pulmati, Veronica Jagalal. Listen, I hope you got something nice for that guy when he come home. If not, run to the store, buy some petals, lead it right to the bedroom, and you know what, but don't rock the world. All right? Um, C. Charan, a very good evening to you, my beautiful wife, Agita Rampasad, is watching. And also, it is good to have the man, Mr. DJ Harry. He is very colorful, and he does a fantastic job. Um, I have to interview this boy. I don't know when I have, well, we have to do it. Um, he got that red, um, Feather earring, he does a good job, he is very entertaining. So, um, thank you very much, brother. And and I want to say to you know, thank you very much for all the love and the support that that you you give me and Gita on the air. Um, God bless you all the time. Also, um, we have let's see, uh, DJ Harry. Hey, again, again, I just see your name again, show up there. So, um, good to have you on. Let's see who else we have. Um, uh, DJ Harry, oh, he, he's been on. Zalil Bacchus, my brother, good afternoon, and thank you very much. I will need you for my show. I have to call you guys. Um, thank you very much. <clears throat> and speaking about that, um, you know, Ariana, be a very good afternoon to you, darling. How, how are you? And I'm so proud of Ariana. She got a news uh, announcement to make sometime. And... Um, I'm so proud of you, and I'll be cheering you on as you head to Guyana to do your thing. Mm -hmm. I will cheer you on, my dear. Carla Felix, a very good evening to you. Oh, that's my best friend. Your bestie? Yes, that's my you bestie. You can say whatever you want to say, bestie. That's my bestie. Hey, bestie. She Thank you for team. joining. And the beautiful Nesta Cameron is watching. She's also um, a Guyanese watching. Um, she 
is very good with cricket. Ne she uh, always, he, I, if I need some information in Ghana, I call, I, I write her, she knows. Nessa, thank you. Nadia Ghani, a very good evening to you, and she's watching from Scarborough in Canada. Um, Sukde Mangal, a very good evening to you. Thank you very much. Dr. Dan Paul is watching. Send your message to him. Dr. Dan Paul, <laughs> he is one of my, my best uh, inspirations in the community. So, Dr. That's Dan Paul, hats off to you. He's a, he's a great guy. Yes. And he was awarded um, an International Men's Award last year from the Ken Rampasacho and from our Hearts of Eureka. So, <coughs> he's a great guy. He's okay. a, a stand-up guy in our community. He is. Um, <coughs> and I knew that he was going to watch Ryan Prasad. A very good afternoon to you. Miss Rati Ragubansi, watching all the way from England. Missy Boo, good afternoon. Thank you very much. Um, we have Debbie Gee. Thanks for watching. Property Tilak. Not a very good evening to you. Mohamed Haq, good afternoon. Um, and you know what? I, I'm, I'm glad that all of you, ladies and gentlemen, are watching and to support this beautiful young lady. And please share the show so that um, people will get to find out who this beautiful young lady is. And of course, she is Guyanese. And Mr. Hurricane, a very good afternoon to you. Thanks for watching. Um, Lauten, Christian Lauten, a very good afternoon to you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. And you met Ariana yesterday I because did. Ariana, she's a beautiful she's soul. Beautiful. <laughs> I love me my I love okay. Ariana in my cup of tea that I'm gonna take a drink now. Here this is for you, Ariana. You know, <laughs> today I was thinking about Ariana. I, I I tell people sometimes um we have to seek the good potential in our youths mm -hmm. because when after we're gone, um we want them to take care, continue our legacy. And Ariana is one of the young girls that I I want to see do great work and to do great things. <clears throat> As we were talking about, um, I'm glad Dr. Don Paul is watching. Keep keep listening because <clears throat> I will talk a little bit about, let's talk a little bit about his book club. Okay. I went one time and I always want to go back because, you know, it's a little marketing for me too. And I, I'm so inspired by you know, the work that Dr. Dan Paul does with the young people. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Some young, brilliant young people he got here. Oh, um, yes. They're oh, smart yes. with a poem and all these oh, things. Oh, yes. They did well <coughs> right? yesterday. Amazing. What's, what's yeah. your take on, on I think that he is on to something really, you know, I, and I, I hope in every community that they can have, they can take that best practice and use it. Mm -hmm. um, and the main... Uh, you, what touched me most of all was to have these brown children yes. talking about African American history in <coughs> such compelling voices. Right, right. It was amazing. It was it was very touching, and um, I felt that <coughs> you know our future is in good hands with the with, with this group. Yeah. Of course, and he said that um, Lordet, um, thank you to Lordet, did a great job moderating our Black History program yesterday. Lorda did such a phenomenal job yesterday, spearheading the Black History Month book fair. Um, and that's my pleasure. <coughs> and that is um, Ariana. B. And that's where I get some people to interview too, because there was a young lady that I want to interview and I, I keep putting this off, but I really have to. Um, she is in the education system. <coughs> um, so continue your great job, um, Dr. Uh, Don Paul, um, I saw you work um, and engage with young people, right? How so, what you do at the United Nations with the young people? Actually, my uh, engagement with the young people was not directly mm -hmm. with my job. Um, and I, I say that, and then I, I can also retract that, because it's not, it, with my job, it's not directly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Our focus at UNFPA is on the 10-year-old girl, making sure that she ha is, her capacity is built in such a way that she can make choices that will be beneficial for her. And this is a 10-year-old girl globally. So that is the focus of our work at UNFPA in terms of good choices, reproductive health, and other choices that sh and educational choices that that 10-year-old girl makes. Uh, and so, 
as I mentioned earlier, my job is in governance, so I'm not right, the technical. Right, I'm not I get the you. technical. Yeah. I'm not on the ground. <laughs> right. And so what what we do is make sure that the programs are in effect and that they're they're passed at the at the at our executive board to make sure that the the programs can be implemented on the ground in the countries across the world, the 150 countries that we have presence. But in terms of my other work, which is my volunteer work, um, and the work that I'm truly passionate about. Talk to me. It's the work that we did yesterday uh, at the, at the uh, African American um, History Month observance. And uh, it's the work that I do through We Are Gutsy. It's the work that I, uh, We Are Gutsy, and, uh, which is the, um, an organization that I, right, I, right. I sit on the board. And, and that, um, the focus of that organization is s strengthening the, um, the social and emotional learning for kids in Guyana. And so, um, so I, that's some of the work that I do, and as well as with the Bishops High School Alumni Association. Right, right. And you may recall last year, um, in October, we had a student conference where we um, we opened up um, career uh, you know, information on careers to over four hundred students. Oh wow, that's a lot. Yes, and so um, so that those are. That is like a snapshot of, of the work that I do with young people. When you when you go to Ghana, do you go to Bishop and visit them or no? Yes, I was there <coughs> up to last October. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yes. that's nice. And I'll be going again in, in June, in July. Oh, good for you. Yeah. And it's, a, it's a good thing. Don't forget where you came from. No, <coughs> no that's one of the, the pillars that I live on. I live, you know, of the value system, a part of the value system that I live by. <coughs> um. Yeah, I know you're older now, and in terms of teenage pregnancy, where you stand on that? I'm, I mean, as a regular person. Um, teenage pregnancy is one of the realities of our time. Young people will always have sex. Old people too. I'm not. not I mean, no, I'm, I'm, just messing with you. I, I'm just messing with you. But go ahead. Young know, teenagers will they will always want to have sex. I think what is critical mm -hmm. is informing young people of the consequences right. of having pre premature sex, unprotected sex. I think um, these are conversations that need to be had in the home, in the churches, in the schools, in the mandir, in the, in the temples. These are conversations that need to be had ongoing conversation so that it will be imprinted. We, the young people will understand the consequences of their actions. Absolutely. But it's a human, it's a sex, sex is a human function. It's, 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 you, you know, the more you tell them not to have it, you have to tell them why they shouldn't have it so right, early. Right. And the consequences of, of, of being pregnant and what that does to a young person. And more often than not, the effect is on the, the woman, the, the girl. As opposed to, the, because the, in many instances, the boys are able to continue their education, but because the, 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 the young girl becomes pregnant, she has to either stay at home, um, and then of course, if you call it, you, you know, we can call in the social um, repercussions, where, you know, she might be so ashamed of becoming pregnant that she doesn't want to go out, depending on the culture, and all these different things. So, um, so I think, the underlying thing is having the conversations and not making it um, taboo. Have the conversations in your homes, often, regularly, and, and, and get their feedback on, on, right. on how Absolutely. they feel about, about these, these issues. And I, I think and the more that you can show them really and truly how this will affect their lives, especially if they have a, a strong plan for their life, then, you know, I think it would minimize um, them becoming, taking that chance. And if they do take the chance, it will ensure that they're protect, use protection. Absolutely. Um, let's play a, a, a nice song, and uh, I know that she will, um, Lourdes will enjoy this tune. It's a, it's a nice guy, um, a guy from Suriname sing this song, I think, or let me play Zaid. 
a nice guy who was here recently. <laughs> That's right, that's right. Welcome back to the Ken Rampersad Show on Island Zone Radio. And this show airs every Sunday afternoon from 5 o'clock onwards. But, you know, today uh, we have to run out soon. So um, we probably go another half an hour or so, which we'll, we have the time. Um, and I'm talking to the beautiful, the brilliant Miss Lordette Ferguson. And I want, first time, I'm going to announce this that, you know, for I forget to mention that our International Women's Day, our second second international women's day award where i get to choose or we get to choose a set of us get to choose some outstanding women in our community could be from trinidad guyana barbados wherever and that's why i need to do more marketing because i'm just about guyana trinidad Suriname, little indian and so when i met lourdes the first time she captivated my heart i said to her but look at she, how she pretty that, all right. So you are going to be one of our recipients for the award, for the International oh. Women's Day Award, um, the 22nd of next month. And so I took your bio, I already sent it to my people already, because I think you are a woman of substance. And- I'm honored. You, oh, all right, I, I'm glad. 
because I believe that you do great work, not only in our community, but back in Guyana. Um, so congratulations. Thank you. Um, I, hope, I hope to see you there. The dress up fans, I mean, you are, you, you are Miss Fashionista, so there's nothing that I'm going to tell you. But dress up 99, like our guy, and he said, and just show up. <clears throat> All right. So, congrats again. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. I'm honored. I'm, yeah. I'm absolutely yeah, honored. Yeah, yeah. We have to do this. We have to. Um, and we do the same thing. We, we, we in the business of helping people. So, I believe in um, helping people, helping women. Mm -hmm. um, we need to embrace women. We need to help. You, we need to fix their crowns, Absolutely. not pull it down. Absolutely. Because, Lord, you know that a lot of times, a lot of women pulling down each other, and we need to change that narrative. Yes. We need to change, fix the crown. Yes. Right? What's your take on that? Well, um, I, I truly believe, well, I, I should say I live by that. I honestly live by that mantra of fixing other people's crowns. Um, I think um, it's an erroneous mindset that propels women to think that they're in competition with each other. Right, right. We all have our gifts, talents, and abilities. And we use those um, to the betterment of those around us. And I believe, I strongly believe that there is a room, there is a place for each and every one of us. This is a big world. Absolutely. This is a truly, and so there's no need to jostle. There's no need to be um, envious of another because we all have gifts, talents, and abilities. And so in our effort to maximize those, we can do that with wherever we find ourselves and, 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 the, and the rooms will open for you if you have a good heart and you, you show up authentically in our world. Um, you know, despite whatever you believe in. You know, I, I mentioned to you before, I'm a person of faith. And so I, that allows me to believe not only in a God who will always open doors for me, but also to believe in myself as a part of his creation, that doors will be open for me. And all I have to do is keep preparing myself for the opportunities. And um, those door, doors would be open. I don't need to be envious of anybody's shine um, because mine will come. Beautiful. Um, Lord, what do you do? You know, I like to to play with words a little bit, you know. Lord, <laughs> you smile. Lord, what do you do to for your own body, mind, and soul, for your own self-care? Because you're always smiling. And that's a great thing. God bless you with a beautiful smile. Smile every day. Who cares? You don't have to worry about things. You just smile. So what do you do to maintain this, Miss Lordet? Well, actually, th that's a very good question. Um, for me, basically, I start, you know, my concept of beauty and the way I show up in the world begins with my inward connection with God. Mm -hmm. And I think um, by doing that, um, through prayer, meditation, reading my Bible, um, I think that helps me to have an outlook that is positive, that is um, open, and that is aware of that the world out there is my oyster. Right, right. Right? And, um, and so I also like to exercise. You do? Yes. All right. Uh, but my... The way that I like to exercise is by walking. Good. Because that relaxes my mind. Mm -hmm. And that allows me to think and to relax. So, um, so that is um, also um, one of the ways in which 
you know, the, I practice self-care. And then the other thing I, I, I absolutely love to do is to travel. You do? Yes. And so that's another way that I relax, you know. Every so often, I just jump on a plane and I go somewhere. Oh, God. Yeah. She began to jump on a plane <laughs> and go on to Guyana. That's my favorite method of transportation. transportation. Yes. It, of course, of course. Yeah. So, you know, we share a lot of things in common. And one of the things I love to do is to travel. And I don't know if you ever went to Ghana yet. No, it's coming up. Actually, I'm going next month. Hey, you <laughs> see? So, here's my thing. I, so I want to tell you yeah. that, um, you see, we got things in common. You see, learn it. I actually, I went to Ghana about probably about 20 years ago. Okay. And I tell you, I get emotional when I say this because in my life, that's, Despite our ancestors, I want to say it in this context uh -huh, from uh -huh, India. Uh -huh. Although I went to Ghana, when I went to <clears throat> the point of no return, when I went into the place of where they kept the slaves, right? And when I heard the stories of what human being, and listen to my words correctly, what human being had to go through and went through, it bothered me. And I still... I still think that was the best thing that I ever did. That I went to Ghana. Yes. And I spent three weeks over there. I eat everything. I eat just like the Africans said. <clears throat> I took my fingers and I, however you want to see, or my hands or whatever you say, and I eat everything that they ate. With them too. <clears throat> that is this cultural immersion. Well, that's what that's I do. That's what it's called. Yes. <laughs> so, and you know, the unfortunate thing on the, of that trip that it was very emotional for me because while I was there, you know, I always put this, Lord, that, you know, this black skin Kulibai from Guyana in such a far place. Mm -hmm. and so the continent are so far from each other. I went to Africa. You hear? <clears throat> and that's amazing. Yes. That's amazing. And you know what the thing is that I, 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 like, I like to share this story. I didn't have a pen and paper. Um, I, I had a pen, but I didn't have paper, but I had a tissue. Mm -hmm. And my friend who was Ghanaian, mm -hmm. we always used to fight, but we end up loving each other. And I always tell her, when you go to Ghana, let me know I would go with you. Mm -hmm. And she made sure that I had a good time. Mm -hmm. And when we talk, Guyanese talk about hospitality. Listen, I think we are on the same level of hospitality. She took me up to pass immigration near to the plane. And I tear up, right? Mm -hmm. And on that tissue, on that tissue I wrote with my with a pen, I said, a thinker, you know, I don't know, it's a far travel from New York to Kotoko International Airport, I never forget, mm -hmm. right? I said, I don't know if I'm gonna arrive safe back in New York if I don't. I want you to read this little note I left for you. I, I said to her that this is one of the best things that ever happened to me. And you made it so special for me that if I should die, I want you to know that I really love you for this. That you will be a part of my life till I die. And it mm -hmm. is so true. Unfortunately, that she passed away. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the family oh, asked me to give a speech and I did so glowingly for her. Mm -hmm. But we do meet some angels, and you'll be surprised and amazed at some the, the hospitality of. I know you don't remember me when you go there, because you will I know, will. <clears throat> you will enjoy the food. And, but so I mean, and and just be yourself. Eat everything what they got. What they bring, you eat because your ancestor did. Yes, um, I, I I'm looking forward to the to the trip, and I think um, well, apart from, you know, like we were talking we were talking about the education earlier, right. And education is also available through travel, right? Right. right? right. And as, as it was for you, uh, so here it was this this East Indian, right, young man from Guyana, yes, who went to Ghana, yes. And I, I was sharing that with the young people yesterday. There's so much value, yes, in education, <coughs> uh, whether you know, and book reading books about other people's experiences because that's what the yes. kids were doing yesterday. Yes, yes. yes. They were talking so compellingly about the African experience. 
and you got an, oppor an opportunity oh, yeah. to, that was a to big see one. exactly that door of no return. And so, so you now have a lot of empathy for mm -hmm. your black brothers and sisters. Of course, of course. Still, because you have some context, you know exactly what that experience was. Yeah. Because you, you've been there and you've heard it from them firsthand. And, and you're also a learning person. You, you, you must have done your research about that experience. Oh, yeah. So you understand the trauma that black people walk around with. Yeah. This is generational trauma, being torn right. away from your family mm -hmm. and put on a boat. And, and, you, and, and they brought you down the Middle Passage yes. and you end up wherever you ended up. But there's so much trauma in our bones from that experience. It's generational trauma. Slavery was no easy, easy road. Right, right. And, you know, when people died, um, they threw them out into the ocean. Yes, and some of them, some of them jumped, <coughs> jumped over, mm -hmm. right? Some of, them all, some of them didn't make it because they preferred to jump, jump. over than to be in captivity. Yes. You know, one of the things, too, although all these years have passed in slavery, when you go in the, the room where they house the women, you could still smell the rankness. Remember, they didn't have pads and all these things, mm -hmm. and those ladies have to all be in that room when they get a menstruation and so on. So I wish you all the best. Take out a lot of pictures and do one, two live, let us see. Um, hey, you would, you, you, you'll make a difference when you come back. I could imagine your conversations with your friends. You know, it would be interesting. It would be very I, interesting. I've, I've been very privileged. I've traveled a lot to really? um, a lot of, in the United States. And I tell people when I travel in the States, that's when I get to um, when I'm driving long distance, mm -hmm. I get to think about life. Um, but the Toastmasters Club, what it is really about? Talk to me. Let me tell you the story about the Toastmasters <coughs> Club. When I first came to this country, and this is a story that I like to tell people because I want to inspire people that you don't always have to be where you are. Stay, re remain the way you are. Right. When I first came to this country, I told you I, went, I came to go to graduate school. Mm -hmm. And when I went to graduate school, I started graduate school, I was very shy. I did not, I, you know, talking in front of people was something that I didn't like to do. Um, and, you know, you might say I'm a model, you, you know, you're always on the stage. And you right, right, right. But it's the difference with modeling and, 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 and then opening story. your mouth. I do, right? I understand. And having a conversation or, or, or speaking in public. And so people generally have this fear of speaking. And so I was talking with one of my colleagues at the UN. Um, actually, he was the ambassador of South Africa. And I was saying to him that I was so afraid of public speaking. And now I'm in graduate school. I have to make all of these presentations. And I don't know exactly how I'm going to do all of this. And he said, why don't you join Toastmasters? Oh, wow. I said, so, oh, I didn't think about that. And he, you know. And he start, we, we started that conversation. I told you about these conversations, right. right? So that conversation allowed, he and I started the first Toastmasters Club in the U.S. Oh, wow. And so essentially, that's how I started out in Toastmasters all those years ago. All right. So we have at the U.N. the World Voices Toastmasters Club. But then life happened, and then I stopped going to the club, you know, you have children, you, can, you have to do all those things. And um, so recently, uh, during the pan pandemic, I started back Toastmasters. Oh, good for you. So, um, so I'm now a part of the CCC, uh, Long Island Orators Toastmasters Club. And so that club, um, so we, we have speeches, and we encourage each other in our uh, speaking and leadership journeys and so that um that's that's what i do uh, as part of my um personal development good for you yeah. so you would encourage people to join that i would absolutely <coughs> encourage everyone to join a toastmasters club because that's what it's there for especially if you have a fear of speaking in public the toastmasters <coughs> club would help you you know i'm glad that you say that because like when i'm on the, when i'm here with the radio I'm calm, I'm collective. I'm like, listen, I could talk to you who were just watching me. <clears throat> but to go and in, in front of people now, 
it's a different it's story. It's a different story, yes. You know, here I could just throw out a shirt, I could do whatever, and I'm comfortable in this seat, but when I go to these places, but, you know, what can I tell you? And I totally agree with you. You know, Lord, we have to do uncomfortable things to get comfortable. Who could have told I failed all my exams as a little boy growing up, and I could not, I remember still, I could not say, say, talk in front of people. Now I'm a star. So look I want you. to encourage look people. You. Yes. I want to encourage people to come out of your comfort zone. And it's okay to make mistakes. It is okay. It's okay to fall. When you get up, when you fall, get up and move on. <clears throat> One of the mantras that I live by is uh, success comes by doing. True. Right. Success That's comes great, by doing. Great, and great, it, great. it it doesn't matter. You don't have to be perfect at the first try. Right, right. Right. Uh, I think uh, I think you keep doing it, and then you you develop uh, you develop expertise by doing it. I always tell this story, you know, and Lord, it, I believe that anybody could get opportunity to do what they want to do. I remember. I I hope that we have new listeners now. Um, <clears throat> when I, before I became a radio host, I thought in my mind it would never happen. Number one, I'm a brown skin boy. Number two, I am not that, I couldn't really talk that much. I could talk, yes. <clears throat> but you know what I used to do? In my car, I used to sit down in my car driving home back and forth from Harlem. And I would say, good evening, this is Dr. Love on 105.9 FM on the dial. Or <clears throat> I would say, welcome to the F train from 179th Street to Stillwell Avenue, making all local stops. Or I would say, Welcome to John F. Kennedy International Airport, Terminal 5A. Making one stop to Dr. Trinidad and Tobago, we will be serving some dumpling and some salt fish. Lord, that was funny. <clears throat> and guess what? No, seriously, I was planning for this. I was planning. And lo and behold, they said one day, we need somebody for the radio. Can you come? Wow. I said... I can't say what I want. I said, yeah, I'm coming. And I that's it. That's where I'm at now. So when you get up, I believe in opportunities. I, I do so. I, I, I honestly believe in opportunities as well. And that's why I told you when, when you asked me to come on, I said, yes. Right. Because as a Toastmaster, every opportunity you get to speak, you speak because that's what you, that's how you build capacity. Yeah, of course. Your success comes by doing. I want to say hello to my friend, Mr. Henry Villa, all the way from Irving, Texas. Thank you very much. The beautiful Miss Ariana. Um, she is having a ball. Mr. Suri Sugrim is watching all the way from Guyana. Um, Nadia Ghani, a very good afternoon to you too. Um, what, what's your take on bullying? It is wrong, so wrong, so very wrong. But I think it's bullies essentially do what they do because of a deficiency in their own, in their own selves. And um, I think particularly in young children, it's particularly cruel. Mm -hmm. and, um, and of course, if it's not harnessed, then of course you, in the workplace you have people who come out with those kinds of that's right that's right right yes and um so i think um, as parents if we see it manifesting in our children i think it's essential that we crush it right right and i think um it should not be tolerated at any level right right and so that is that is basically my take on bullying. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it should be crushed. It should be, it, and, and our, as parents, our teachers, grandparents, when we see it manifesting, we have to make sure that it comes to a grinding halt. Uh, it's not. It's not an endearing personality uh, uh, trait at all. Um, I don't know. But with your experience, if you have ever experienced drugs and alcohol in your community, where you are, you know, in your surrounding, but do you have a, 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 a stance on this? Well, how do you look at it? I, th I think um, drugs, 
any, any abuse, abuse of any substance is, um, is, an, is indeed very unfortunate. And then of, cor of course, it comes from the drug use typically comes from some gap or some gap in the, in the user. Um, uh, whether it's emotional trauma, it, it could be trauma, uh, you know, all these different things. Um, but I think um, as individuals, as gatekeepers, such as ourselves, um, whether it's in the, you know, in the home, in the home, in the schools, in the, um, in the community spaces, um, I think so many times we have to stand in the gap for parents who um, have who themselves have gaps in their in their in their personalities and so um, you know they basically are not the kind of keepers of the gates of their own homes mm -hmm. um, and so their children fall into these kinds of practices and sometimes the parents themselves um, have these harmful practices. And so it's very unfortunate that we have um, such a, a <laughs> an epidemic of sorts um, in our community when it comes to alcohol and drug use. And, um, and of course, the societies are such that, you know, the, the, the person who is using even though you might be living in the same house or uh, with them, they have to want to be cured. And, uh, and sometimes it's just so devastating to see um, parents with children, uh, young adult children, and basically they can't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. Their hands are tied in so many instances. And so um, it's really heartbreaking to see those um, those situations, um, but uh, which is why I do what I do, which is try to build capacity in the children before they get to that stage where right, right. they you know they're uncertain of themselves and they want to try these children who are busy and who are engaged um, and who are sure of themselves are not as likely to try mm -hmm. drugs. And, true, and, true. And, and abuse drugs and alcohol. True. And so once you get to them before then, that's why I applauded Dr. Dan Paul and what he is doing and uh, keeping them engaged and all the all the community leaders that and the teachers uh, uh, and you know that help keep our children motivated and help them keep their eyes on the prize that there's so much uh, in store life could be so beautiful for you. Not perfect. But life could be beautiful if you follow if you follow these steps. You 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 focus on your education. If you uh, engage in extracurricular activities, uh, children who are engaged in drama and um, and have hobbies that they you know chess club and and, and and book clubs and so on, and find and the children who find their niche by doing those things mm -hmm. are less likely to True. to be engaged in drugs <coughs> and, 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 and that sort of harmful and uh, harmful behavior. You're right. You know I'm an addiction nurse. Oh no, I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah, I, I've been serving this community mm -hmm. for oh, about 20 years. Wow. I work at an addiction uh, center. Um, and I've, I've said this before, um, years ago when I started, we were not seeing a lot of guys coming in for treatment, mm -hmm. but I had a prediction mm -hmm. that in years to come, you would see our Guyanese Indians mm -hmm. and Blacks come in for treatment because of drugs. And I got to tell you that I'm surprised to see so much Indians coming in wow. for alcohol abuse, for um, crack cocaine abuse. Um, they sell them coming for opiates like things like heroin and pills and so on. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised when some school teachers come in, female from Guyana. And so I think years to come, mm -hmm. I may gone. But we are going to, our children, our grandchildren, 
would get into the same system we will fall into the same system i hope your prediction is yeah oh, if, yeah sorry if we don't really put some work in i hope that this summer that i could do some work on alcohol addiction and i, I always inc encourage our guyanese um you know listen don't start giving your youngsters yeah. to drink and smoke and and these kind of things right um let's our final topic i want to talk to you about is that um, you were the judge um, for the Lotus pageant. Is it your first pageant you judged? No, actually. No? No, I, I told you I was involved in the fashion and beauty world in Guyana before right. I came okay. to the U.S. Okay. And so I judged uh, quite a few fashion shows oh, you before did, yeah. I came. All right. Yeah, so this was not my first. This was not my first rodeo. But this is my first time judging an Indian beauty pageant. All right. Right. So this was uh, a, so it was a virgin experience in that context, right? And so it was a very pleasant experience. Those girls were beautiful. Yeah, right, they right. were talented. <laughs> right, right. Oh yes, and uh, yeah, I totally enjoyed the experience. Um, yeah. And also, <clears throat> when you know when the first person, I, I think you guys got it right. When the first girl came, the winner, mm -hmm. the first place, the queen. Mm -hmm. When I saw her, Lord, and that girl smiled, Jesus of Nazareth, she <laughs> lighted up the whole room. <coughs> right? Yes, yeah, yeah. she did. She, she lighted up the whole she, her room. Pers she, has a, she had a personality that just, it was just so warm. And it, right. just, it exuded from her speech right. and the way how she conducted herself during the pageant. Right. She's a lady in the yeah. making. Yeah, no, she a star. A, she's a star. A star. She's a star. She's a, she's she's really. Um, I think uh, we will hear. We will continue to hear good things about her. And not only her, but they're quite. A, you know. Yes. Yes. The cohort of young women were really talented, and you know, I look forward to hearing good things about them in their own in individual context because, you know, there's only one winner, as we know, right? Right. Right. But they're all winners in terms of. If they follow their own dreams, and right. if they, if they, Correct. yes, if they follow, there's a space, there's a place in this world for each and every one of them, and for them to shine and to impact the world positively in whatever they endeavor to do. I, I'm sure you don't know, but Lord, I became the first Guyanese to become a judge for birds. I became the first Guyanese to win a national to get second place at the National Bird Show. And you see that painting up there? That's the second place I got in Schomburg, um, in Chicago. Oh, really? Yes, yeah, so it, um, I got second for the show. I'm a top exhibitor for breeding birds, and you to watch at the top there. I see, I see. So, I, I, was, I was like, wow, look, look at, yeah. uh, oh my goodness, so, look at trophies. Yeah, so as you guys were judging, I was judging too. Really? Oh, oh yeah, because imagine I could get to judge the birds and look at the feathers, how they, moving that cage um with the toenails and the head the, the head shape and the beak and all these things so really yeah so i became the first um and there was an article to um dr dan paul had wrote on oh, me okay. for profile of the week so i think you guys did a great job i i applaud you because um it was a good it was a great thing um and we need it that was. in our community it was yeah. <clears throat> i hope that um let me continue this and um you know, hope I get to judge one day. Well, hey. yes, I think we only had one male judge on the panel, which oh, was, really? yeah. So the next time we need to have a little more yeah, 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 yeah. gender Gen balance. Gen oh yeah, yeah. That so would be if good. Lachmi, if you're watching, the next time we need gender balance, we need That's more right. men, more males on the panel. So we, yeah, that would be that'd, that'd be, be good, awesome. right? Yes. You know, and one of the thing is that as a judge, what I do is that um, we get to talk, we get to say why we choose this bird or the top 10 birds mm -hmm. so the audience doesn't feel any kind of a way okay. but like i always tell people listen no matter who which <laughs> bird you put up they will always have sour people crying out loud but competition competition yeah <clears throat> my final question to you is um and by the way i'm trying to get um i have a surprise who's going to be the my my mc for the international um, Women's Day, and you know who it is. And also, I'm trying to get um, 
the best Lotus Queen to come on to to be one of the co MC. Oh, that would be lovely. That'd be nice, eh? Yes. I like to give. I'm like you. We share a lot of things yes. in common. Yeah. I like to give young people a chance. Oh yes. It's the only way, yeah. because you have to you have to create opportunities for them, and they have to learn by doing also. So you know, in that context, if you have an established MC and then you have her oh, as a, co a co MC, it's a perfect match. And you know, when I was thinking about it, you know, I am a talk show host. I got my partner as a talk show host. We, we work together, mm -hmm. and I'm saying, look, I could go up the stage here and I could do things. But I believe in women empowerment. I believe in men empowerment. I believe sometimes, Lord, that, that we have to, people don't realize, you don't have to be at the front on the mic all the time to shine. No. My don't. light, I tell people, and I, I listen, I give myself praise sometimes, but my light could shine from the back. Yes. So at the International Women's Day, I would sit back and watch everybody present themselves and shine. And I believe that I will shine through them. You will. Right. Because you're the man behind it. Right. So You know, light cannot be contained. Right. Light, light is, is light. Right. light. It illuminates the entire space. It, it, right. it, it kills darkness. So. Um, yeah, I see um, Nadia said, where is Kenneth located? Someone. Um, oh, I don't know. I don't know what you mean. Um, a very good topic. Yes. New York. Uh, I'm in New York. Um, when I go to Canada and I like to meet up with my, my viewers, I don't okay. care. I go and check them out. That's nice. Yeah, I do that. I want them to know I love them. Oh, I yes. appreciate them. And oh God, but it, it, the only thing that when I go sometimes, like one of them, you know, I love her and she loved me. I take my family, my wife, and oh God, it's like two bag of mango and all these things they're giving me, like, like Guyana style, if you know what I mean. Well, you know, we were generous. People, people, Guyanese people right. are very generous people. So, and I'm sure, and, and loving people. So, yeah, yeah, and, you, I, and you gave a lot, so you, I you will get. I, I, I think yes. I, I am blessed, Lord. Yes. And I know you are blessed too. I am. I am. I, people say sometimes that by you lucky. I said, listen, I don't buy that no more. I am blessed, baby. You are blessed. You I'm are blessed. blessed. You know, so, um, and we, you have to come back one day so we could share some, um, um, some experiences in life. What's your, and I say, if I, if I don't watch your time, then we're going to get carried away. But, um, you know, what are my final question to you is, um, Lord, what's your philosophy in life? How do you view life? Oh, I'm happy that you asked that question. You do? Oh. Yes, yes. I am very, I'm happy that you asked that question because I operate life on certain principles. Mm -hmm. The one that is dearest to me is doing unto others as I would like them to do, the golden rule. Right, right. Right? Um, I also try to have a, a mindset, an open mindset, uh, uh, a growth mindset, where I'm open to growing and, and, and evolving as a human being. Sure. Right? I think um, God does not expect us to be, to be one way all the time. I think, um, and I also think that we learn from each other. Um, and if if I am the brightest person in the room, that means I need to get another room. Oh, wow. Yeah, because I want to be able to learn from others. So I could be the brightest person in the room sometimes, maybe with, with younger people, but I also like to be in a position where I learn from other people and I learn from other experiences that I engage in. So, um, of course, I told you that, you know, my faith is very important to me and I am a devout Christian and I operate my life um, based on the teachings of Jesus Christ. And so that allows me to be kind, empathetic, and uh, loving to his creation, which is, you know, God's creation, every person that I meet, and to treat people with respect. Amen. Right? Um, I think that is fundamental to my person and the way that I operate and engage with people. That's beautiful. I love it. Because, you know, Lord, I think that 
that I think I know because I came a far way because I know I'm blessed every day despite whatever I get up to the notion of I'm going to live my best version of myself that's amazing right yes and every day I am thinking how do I improve you know we are not perfect I'm not no, perfect none of us is but I think of how do I become evolve into a better human day a human being every day <clears throat> that's like, the approach right that's the approach yeah. that's fundamentally the, the <clears throat> approach and i want to share this with you and our audience like we all could make a big difference in the community where we live it doesn't have to be um with a lot of money for example i had a bag of bottles in my car i collect uh -huh. them you know, I'm a nurse. I, uh -huh. I don't have to do that, really, uh -huh. to be honest with you. Uh -huh. But I had a bag of bottles, and I see an old lady was pushing a cart uh -huh. on um, Linden Boulevard, uh -huh. and she was carrying her bottles. Uh -huh. So I stopped my car, uh -huh. put on the side, stopped my car, my car, and I said, Auntie, this bag of bottles for you. Uh -huh. And you know what I start to do now every day? I start to collect bottles in a, and have them in a drawer. And I, I collect about 200 and something. So I'm planning one day when I reach to, when I see somebody in the street uh -huh. who is collecting bottles, I'll have over 250 bottles for them. Yeah. You know, philanthropy does not, you don't have to be Warren Buffett or Bill Gates right. to be a philanthropist. Yes. You know, that's philanthropy. Right. Right. Um, giving of your time is philanthropy. Yes. Um, you know, even if you find time for one person, it's philanthropy. Yes, yes. And so um, that is something that, you know, a lot of people don't know and understand because time is money. Right, right, right. Right? Absolutely. So, it, you know, if you give of your time to a cause, you're a philanthropist. And so, and you are positively impacting someone's life. True, true. And that is the approach that we all should take and making other people's lives better and you know, as you give, you will receive. Amen. So just as you give unto others, you also will be given unto. You, you know, the gar you water somebody else's <coughs> garden, somebody your else. garden will also be watered. True, true. So. I'm sorry your interview has to be cut out soon, because, but you know what? We could have this conversation. We could continue this conversation. <clears throat> but Lord, um, I know this is not the end of our conversation, of our meeting. I know that um, <clears throat> probably when you become... Dr. Lardet Ferguson, you will come back and uh, we will share some story to enlighten our community, our young people. We will, you are bright light already because when I Thank see you the you. first time, I kept you, you pull me. I said, God, she's a beautiful woman, Lord Jesus. But you know, I could, I do all these fancy things because I want people to know, I want to help people to know, listen, I see you like baby. <laughs> I see a light, no matter what, how you try to hide it. And I came and I spoke to you. You did. You absolutely did. <laughs> and that's one of the things I do. I, I try to do because you never know if you'll get the opportunity to meet that person again and to say, I believe in telling people how you feel. I have <clears throat> actually um, started doing that yes. maybe over the past year or two. I started doing that. Yes. You don't, you, and, and, well, I'm, I think I've been that way a little more than that. But, you know, and, you know I go up to people, I go up to strangers, and I, I compliment them. Yes. Um, it takes nothing out of right, you right. to step over right. and to make somebody else's day. Right. And so that is something that I do regularly. And, yeah. you know, it makes you feel good, and it makes the other person feel yeah, good. Yeah, of course, well. the other person too, because yeah. they say, oh, my God, thank you. I, yeah. If I see a beautiful girl... Yeah. And I said, oh my God, you are beautiful. And I got this, I don't know where I get this thing from. My God, you are such a beautiful creation. You yeah. are, are you, like the other day I see a girl and she smiles, all the time she's smiling. I says, wow, you got a beautiful smile. Keep yeah. smiling, baby. Yes, you, you know what I'm saying? Them, yes. You know? there's, there's, so, nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. Right, right. So time is against us, but let's see. Lord, you got a very special song that you like. Um, but we got to be very careful with the song that we, we choose. That was a nice one there that Babylon can't chant. You like it? Oh, Jesus. That took, that would take me really, take me back a long way. Babylon can't chant? Yes. You, the, 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 the Dula, hey, da, 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 Okay, da, let's see. That the, one used hey, to be really, hey. 
Yes. Yeah, you. That Bab was a nice song. Yeah, yeah. Um, Babla, Kanchen. Um, that that would take me back in, in time. And I want to do that. <laughs> T H A N. And you say Dulaha, right? I yeah. Don't, I don't uh, know the me, words. Me, uh, yeah. the thing. I just know the beat of the song. I'm gonna play this. I I like to do the figures. Um, I am not sure if it, this is one going to be, but let's play this one especially for you. I don't know. If, is it? <laughs> oh, no, this is another one, but it's, an, it's for you. I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> She know music. I could tell she deal with Indian sure, people. That's right, and Carla Felix says she enjoy it. Carla, your friend know a little music, girl. BB Back is very good afternoon to you. Carla, I could imagine she when she hear them song. This. Thank you for supporting your friend, Carla. No, a very good evening to you. I'll be the same. Thank you for your love and your support. DJ Vicky, a very good afternoon to you. Please share it with your friends and your family. Hafiza Khan, a very good afternoon to you. Roshani Bax, good afternoon. Nobody be conscious, boy. Sorry she had to go so soon. Please share the show with your friends and your family. <laughs> Iris Shift Charan, a very good afternoon to you. Glad you're dancing, Nadia. All right, guys, have a very good afternoon. Enjoy the rest of the evening and take it easy, all right? On this note, we say goodbye. We say ta-ta. Oh, oh, wait, wait, oh, oh, you, you could talk, you could say your, your final, I'm oh, sorry, I didn't ask you, go ahead and talk. No problem. Thank you. The being a voice.
for right. so many, uh, so many um, within our community. There's, you know, you know, there's a role um, for media, and it's a main getting those voices, the grassroots voices, out. Yes, serves its purpose. Of course. And so you're doing an amazing job, and I thank just you. wanted to commend you uh -huh. for that. So thank you so very much for inviting me, and thank you for all that you do in our community. You're welcome. You know I love you like bacon, salt, fish. Tell me, take it easy. And I can't wait to see you on. And ladies and gentlemen, she is one of the recipients. And it was not a hard thing to do because when my soul, and I could see why my soul is connected to her the first time I saw her, because I think that we share some of the same values. Yeah, and I want to say, I should say thank you too for coming on the show today. And thanks for all that you do for especially the young people. For those who doesn't have a voice yeah. in our community, and you are the voice. Thank you. All right. Thank you. God so, bless you. All right. So I'm glad we didn't cut off on you guys getting here.